But uh, I, I really wanted to have him on because I wanted to show you that there are people in the Senate and in Congress that have your principles, have your values, and then never discuss them. And the things that we want to talk to um, uh, the senator about are things that I don't think you've ever heard before. And he does not like talking about them. And it has been a, a, a while to get him to agree to come onto the program. Years. Years mm-hmm. to talk about these. He's a humble guy. Uh, his name is uh, Jim Inhofe. He's a U.S. senator uh, from Oklahoma and uh, the senior senator there. And welcome to the program, Senator. Nice how are you? Nice to be with you, Glenn. And in fact, Kay said be sure to thank him for the Christmas card. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You know, after being married 55 years, uh, I do what I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Senator, before we get into the um, – the politics and the things that are going on. I really don't want to miss this opportunity because I know we've asked you to talk about this before and you're a humble guy and you never want to, but um, you go to Africa a lot. And I have heard the story about when you went to Africa and you were actually called to the tent of Muammar Gaddafi. Are you willing to share that story? Well, there's a lot better ones in Africa than, than that one, but it happened to be that uh, Muammar Gaddafi he was one of the old timers down there. There are a lot of uh, presidents of these countries down there, and I think you know that what I have been doing for 20 years now is going down there. You know Doug Coe, you and I have talked about this, and he has what I call, well, he doesn't call it this, but I call it the uh, political philosophy of Jesus. And it's all scripturally based. It's, um, oh, Acts 9.15 is what did Jesus say to Paul on the road to Damascus? He said, take my name to the kings. Uh, Then Acts 2.42 is the genesis of these uh, meetings that we have every week, you do, and I think most people, a lot of the listening already says, based on uh, uh, the four things, you get together weekly and eat together, pray together, fellowship together, talk about the precepts of Jesus together. So what we've been doing for 20 years is, it was a mission up until 9-11, and then it became combined with uh, with some military. But coming back, making a gas stop, coming back from uh, Sub-Sahara Africa, and this was some time ago, um, uh, Gaddafi was, uh, when we stopped for gas, I, we don't know how he knew I was there. But uh, he, there's a, some of the State Department said, for some reason, Gaddafi wants to talk to you. <laughs> so we went out, and this is... It was really he's out in the, his tent in the desert, and it's freezing cold. And I had my friend Mark Powers with me, and he they he when we walked in his tent, he kicked everybody out out in the cold, and they had to kind of huddle around the camels to keep warm. And he wanted to uh, visit and pray together, and and we did. And it was uh, it was well over an hour there out there in the in the desert, and it just it kind of shows that these people. Well, you you might remember uh, some of the others that that were on our our hate list and our terrorist list uh, that were uh, that also once you get there and to get together with them and pray with them and and spend time with them and then to get there there now we didn't do this with with Gaddafi but with most of them down there members of Parliament uh, Glenn will get together and again under Acts two forty two. They'll do just what we do in the United States Senate. Not many of your listeners know that every Wednesday morning we get together and have a prayer breakfast. And so we ha- encourage others to do the same thing. The idea is if you're meeting in the spirit of Jesus, you, know, you can you can love people that you have nothing else in common with. And so I guess now over the last uh, 20 years I've made 137 African country visits. I can tell you just one, one story about uh, this because – uh, I've been invited to come over and speak when they want to have, uh, they'll meet on a weekly basis, then they'll want to have a national prayer breakfast. And I can remember when Rwanda and Burundi, the two countries right across the river from each other, uh, asked me if I would be a speaker. That's about 11 years ago now. And they wanted to have their first prayer breakfast. And I won't tell you her name, but the the ambassador, when I showed up in in um, uh, in, in Burundi, after it was over, we let her come in. Normally, you don't want the State Department in there. They don't know what's really, they don't do much that's right. And she said afterwards, <laughs> she said, you know, I can't believe it. There you had the president at that time, his name is Bioya, 
you had uh, the uh, first lady, you had the members of Congress, you had the the uh, the, uh, the heads of the Hutus and the Tutsis who had never been in the same room without trying to kill each other, and uh, for three hours singing and, and rejoicing, she said, I, "I can't I can't believe today what I've seen." So that's kind of what it's about. So what 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 happens when you go in and you're you're meeting with somebody like Gaddafi, and I mean, Gaddafi is not, and, and I'm sure there's others, and you know, feel free to expand this, it, but well, I'm sure... Th- you might be surprised, though, because you get, let's say, President Museveni in, um, in, in Uganda. Uh, he has been one that uh, is been around for a long period of time, and for some of these, like President Karaku is down in Benin, uh, these presidents have known each other for a long time. Most of them came from the bush. Most of them came from, you know, a, a background of violence. And, and then uh, they communicate with each other. Now, of course, Gaddafi's gone now, but the others are there. And uh, it, it just, I can give you an example. I, I took Tim uh, Scott with me last time I went. That was about just a few months ago. We were in Ethiopia, and uh, we had several, including the Speaker of the House and several others, sitting down in, 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 together with us, each one giving his own story as to what happened with him and uh, between his background of violence and, and, and uh, meeting Jesus, many of them uh, had killed countless people. Some of them were, went through prison. But uh, something's going on there, and we've had an opportunity to visit with, you know, uh, in some 32 countries now where they are meeting in the, uh, on a weekly basis and meeting in the spirit of Jesus. So when you left the tent, I mean... Because, for instance, again, just going back to Gaddafi, but they're, you know, they're, they're like, uh, nothing really changes, does it? Oh, yeah, it, it, it does. And I, I wouldn't say it did in that case, because that was right at a time when they were trying to get some things done and get him back on, on a list where he could, we could start cooperating. It lasted for a while. But you go to the other countries, and just uh, give you an example. Down in, I mentioned uh, Benin, President Karaku at that time. Uh, my question was, all right, so you go and you and you talk to the presidents and you talk to the members of parliament and they start meeting and then would they communicate with us here between our prayer groups here? And I'm talking about the Senate prayer group. Um, down there, my question was, what can you do? What about all these millions and millions and millions of people in, in poverty in these countries? And, you know, Glenn, we think we know poverty. We don't know poverty until you see oh, what's going on down there. The little kids walking through the junk piles with rats hanging on their on their knees. And well, anyway, uh, we've been mentoring, not me, but others uh, in our group, have been mentoring some of the young people. And there's a a, a, a village called Akpali in Benin. Benin's a small country of only, uh, oh, I think they have 12 provinces. And Akpali used to be called the Village of Darkness, and that's where most of the, a lot of the slave trade came to this country. And uh, in Akpali, it was a, 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 we had mentored these kids, you know, like they sent them out two by two. These are the poorest of the poor, uh, without an education, and just mentoring them in the scriptures, and then send them out to uh, to villages. And I, I, I've been at Akpali probably, oh, I don't know, five or six times. And that village, the, 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 the chief would say, you know, before these kids came in, everybody hated each other. They were killing, they'd, they'd murder, they'd kill the older people and all that. The kids came over, came in to help. And the, finally they said, uh, you know, why are you helping us? And they said, because we love you. And uh, why do you love us? And they, uh, their response was, well, because Jesus loves us. And then they said, who's Jesus? Well, anyway, that little village there that we saw that was the poorest of the poor village, the last time I was there, where it was the rainy season, so we had to walk up uh, a good bit of the way. And on the way up, uh, Glenn, you could hear little voices singing. And, uh, and then when you got closer, you could hear what they're singing. They're singing, Jesus loves me, this I know for the, you know, the song. And what they were doing, we got up there, these kids in this little, and it all lined up on benches, uh, barefooted, but with the uniforms on, learning English by singing Jesus songs. 